What's going on guys? Welcome back to another episode of King Customs. For those of you who are new to the channel, my name is Ryan and welcome back. Now, I have gotten some viewer requests asking me what tools and stuff did I use to do the avalanche rebuild on the engines. I guess some of these viewers want to do a rebuild of their own. Um, you can definitely use my video as a guide, so hopefully that helps you guys. I put it out there to really help you all. But um, you guys want to know what tools I've used? So I'm going to show you. And everything will be in the link in the description below. So let's get started. So what's going on, guys? So the very first thing that was used was this awesome hoist i picked this up from harbor freight i think i paid 179 dollars for this it was on sale it is a two ton um hoist i definitely consider picking one up the harbor freight one's pretty good um i have not had any issues with it but i do know that harbor freight makes some stuff that i don't trust sometimes but this one i have no issues with it so i'd say pick one up next thing on the list is this behind all the garbage is the uh Engine stand. Engine stand is awesome to have. It helps you put the motor on. Like in my videos, I had it on the motor and on the stand, and it was so easy to build. Um, definitely pick one up from Harbor Freight. That's where I got mine. I think I paid, I think that's a one ton, if I believe. And I paid about a hundred bucks, I think, for it. So it wasn't that bad at all. Um, with a coupon, you can get it cheaper. A uh, couple of other things, uh, depending on if you have a lift in your shop, if you don't have a lift in your shop, um, that was definitely one of the important things that I've had. Now, you do not need a lift in your shop. You can do this all on the ground. For me, I just bought the lift because I wanted convenience, um, but it's very doable on the ground. And these trucks are not that hard to work on, so you don't really need a lift, but you can get one if you want to. With the lift, I got these jack stands. These stands were to help um, hold the weight of the truck up or just help assist the weight of the truck up because I don't really trust lifts that much. And the more things that I can have to help me get out of there in case of an emergency, the better. So you can pick one of those up if you got a lift. And I bought those from jegs.com, I think. So I'll put a link in the description for that. Um, next thing I got was an air compressor to use my air tools. Now this air compressor is a Craftsman one, but I had a little Husky one. I bought that from Home Depot, which I can leave a link in the description for y'all or help y'all find one on Amazon. It's all right. Um, and that worked really good to help me get all those, uh, you know, the wheels off and all the uh, motor engine mounts and everything off. It came in handy and it worked really well. So let us look through all the tools that was needed. Okay, so one of the biggest tools that were needed is this piston ring compression tool. I picked this up online. I think I paid like 10 bucks for it. Um, basically you put the piston in, you use this little key tool that it comes with and you turn it and it tightens down and holds the piston rings in place so you can put it over your block and use the edge of a hammer to knock your pistons in place. That's something that you're going to need when you're installing your pistons and piston rings. Uh, another bunch of stuff that you need are ratchets and a variety set of sockets. Uh, I would just get a whole set, the DeWalt tool set that I post up, basically would have everything you need to really do this. You can get some impact sockets as well. And if you're not 100% sure what an impact socket is or looks like, they look like these. They're black, they're made for air guns, air tools. You don't wanna use the chrome ones because the chrome ones can crack, chip, or shatter right in front of your face and that's dangerous. Um, also, another big tip too, Whenever you're building engines or touching anything on a car, wear safety glasses. I know a lot of my videos, I don't have safety glasses on and I'm an idiot. I should not be working like that. It's a dumb way to work. If something goes in my eye, I'm screwed. So wear safety glasses. I've been trying to do a lot better on that with vehicles. I've been wearing my glasses a lot more. So back to impact sockets, get some of these. I'll leave a link in the description below for you. Uh, another thing you're gonna need is a air gun. Air tools are your friend, and even better than that, electric tools are your friend. Now, the air gun, Ingersoll Rand is what I go with. Um, I'll leave a link in the description for that. That helps you to remove a lot of stuff. Crank bolt pulley uh, to remove the bolts from the motor mounts, to remove the bolts from the um, exhaust system, to remove the bolts from the uh, transmission and engine mounts, um, the transmission mounting to the engine. 
it, it it helps save so much time and it'll help you a lot so definitely pick up some air tools electric tools are better you can charge them and they're all they're starting to get really powerful some of them are probably way powerful more powerful than my air tools uh, milwaukee is definitely a great brand uh, i started to buy those and get rid of all my other electric tools that i've had i've been only going towards milwaukee now uh let's see what else is gonna need it um definitely a maggot not, Definitely a magnet to pick up any bolts that are dropping. Um, trim removal tools to remove the front grille and bumpers and stuff from the Avalanche or any vehicle because when you do that, you have so much more clearance on working and getting in and out of the truck. Um, a variety of pliers and locking locking pliers these are needed to help remove hose clamps um i had a special one that i used which was a hose clamp pliers which i'll leave in the link in the description but i don't have it here with me right now it's all the way in florida but that comes in handy to remove all the hose clamps for the coolant lines and whatnot um so definitely pick up some of those when you're doing this uh what else is here i'm going through my drawers while i'm talking to y'all mm. Hammer, you're gonna need this for when you're knocking the piston back in. Uh, definitely, it's helpful. Use the wooden part of the handle. Uh, I don't think we needed wrenches, really the sockets that we needed. And torque wrench, you're gonna need them, all three kinds. Quarter, half inch, and three eighths. I pick every single one up from Harbor Freight. Um, did I pick these up from, no, yeah, I did pick these up from Harbor Freight. Uh, pretty good deal, you can get them with uh, with a coupon, you'll get them for nothing, but these work amazing, and you need them to torque down your motor because you want your motor to be a specific torque. You don't want anything coming loose on you in that motor and damaging all your hard work because that will be a nightmare. It's a lot of money. It's not really that much money, but to others, it's a lot of money. To me, I didn't think it was that much. I thought it was a pretty good deal, um, but to others, it's a lot, so... I'm going to be considerate to everyone else out there. Just be careful what you're doing. Torque down everything. Some other stuff that you're going to need is some buckets. You're going to need some pans, which I'll leave in the link in the description below. Everything I'm mentioning here is going to be in the link, in a link in the description below. Um, some buckets, pans to catch your fluids, to catch your oils, to catch your coolants, whatever you need. Um, power steering pulley removal tool that you can go to AutoZone or AutoVance Auto and borrow it and then return it back uh so you need those little specialty stuff like that you can always go to advanced auto and return them and borrow them back so you need that to remove your power steering um these sockets impact sockets and stuff like that that's basically all you need to remove this motor um rtv you're gonna need that to seal back some stuff uh there is something that i use to seal my head gaskets let me see if i can find it this thing if you want to seal your head gaskets, use this thing. Now, a lot of people tell me I can just put the head gasket on the block, and that's it. I don't need anything. But for me to give extra security to make sure that that head gasket does not go bad, I use Shellac Indian Head Gasket Sealer. This thing seals the head gasket to the block. Basically, if that head gasket blows, this is like an extra layer of protection on that. That is, It's not going to blow. You're, you're going to be okay. You can still ride it for a bit. Um, this is where it's at. This is something that you should invest in. A couple bucks at Advance Auto. It's not that crazy and it's really cool. Really sticky, but it's cool. Another thing you're gonna need is a piece of two by four wood or some kind of wood to basically, and a jack. So you can jack it up under the car to hold up the transmission when you remove the motor. You can, uh, and some wire to, to wire everything up. Or how I did it was I put some uh, wood and then I used the, the block, um, I put some wood and then I used the jack to jack up my transmission so it's not just leaning on the floor and trying to fall out and give me problems. So I had that being supported. And um, a lot of jack stands. You're gonna still need jack stands when you're dropping it off the lift, on, from the lift onto the floor. And uh, yeah, that's basically a lot of what's needed. Um, if there's anything else that I'm forgetting, I will leave it in the link in the description below. And um, that's basically it guys there's not really much tools needed it's not that crazy of how it looks when you're doing it you're probably gonna need little stuff here and there but the tool set that i put up will basically give you everything you need 
um the impact sockets you're gonna have to get that separately a lot of things are sold separately but uh yeah other than that um some of the stuff i borrowed from people too like uh the um engine holder to hold it on the crane because you're gonna need that you're gonna need some bolts to hold it onto the stand um those stuff i borrowed from friends around so if you have friends who work on cars and stuff they may have it uh if not i can put the link in the description for the the hoist holder as well uh it's called a valley plate holder that doesn't cost much i think it was like 20 bucks um and it's pretty good to have especially for those five three motors it it it's great because i had to take that motor out i th no i never had to take that motor out more than once i think i took it out just one time i don't even i don't think i took that motor out I just think I built it and put it back in in one shot and it fired up. So I have to relook at my videos, but I think that's what I did. But yeah, guys, other than that, if there's anything else that I have not put in this video and that I forgot in for you guys, I will leave a link in the description below for y'all with everything that's needed. Um, thank you for asking the question and thank you for being genuinely interested in seeing what I have or um, wanting to know. I appreciate it and I love sharing everything. So peace out. Make sure you like, comment, and subscribe. If there's anything that you want to see, if there's anything that you want to know, if there's any questions that you have, please leave it in the comment section below, and I got you. Peace out. Enjoy your day.